professor from the University of Bologna, uh, but also a contract professor from the, from the University of Calabria, no? uh, Luigi Doria. Luigi is an economist. Uh, he has been conducting research in Nantes, France, but also in uh, Ennis. His recent research interests mainly focus on the economy of sociology, and particularly the relationship between quality and regulation. So quality has become a very widely term, uh, but also a very controversial term. And, and I think that we need to be clear about the concept of quality and about the implication of different contexts. And I think that this is your main concern today, so uh, thank you for coming and the floor is your Quality of public services, quality of urban governance, and so on. 
but if we think, for example, new EU policy, the role of standards and indicators are extremely important. And the role of auditing uh, in the management of the EU uh, organization is extremely important. And if we think the supranational organization, International Audit Fund, World Bank, uh, they all work uh, with indicators. Producing indicators is one of the main tasks of this organization. So all public policy at all levels is shaped by the power of quality, the power of quality technologies, the power of quality discourses, uh, the power of quality devices. And finally, even the domain of law, the law making, is shaped by quality. I'm thinking about regulatory policy, which has become uh, something very important, even if it's uh, controversial. In the day, uh, long debate, uh, and I refer to the uh, regulatory impact assessment, uh, to the attempt of evaluating the quality of national regulation frameworks, on the attempt of producing indicators for national lawmaking. So in all the dimension and at all levels of social, economic uh, and even juridical life and political life, we find politics uh, is something uh, ubiquitous, something extremely powerful even uh, something uh, whose power is in map and we don't know why are we speaking so much about quality, are we working so much about quality on quality measurement, uh, are we paying so much attention uh, to uh, quality uh, indicators, production and so on. And yet in the midst of the rise of the quality culture, uh, of the quality language, uh, of the quality ideology, uh, the meaning of quality, the sense of quality is controversial. On one hand, quality is a good thing, quality is a very good thing. Quality is uh, a very loaded reference for managerial, socio-economic and political life. On the other hand, quality appears as uh, the emblem of a tendency toward controlling, calculating, accounting for it. It's something, uh, is the eating uh, under which a tendency toward an explicitation of social life develops. So on one hand, quality is something very good is an uncontested value. On the other hand, it's something extremely controversial. It's considered to be uh, a danger. And precisely in the perspective of the strange, peculiar power of quality, uh, the question of the proliferation of calculation has been done. By asking why are we measuring the quality of everything? Why are we calculating the quality of everything? Uh, it's been the basis for the question why are we calculating it? Why should we measure every aspect of social life and human life, including, for example, emotions, including governments, including uh, psychological states, uh, including social relations, including uh, family relations? Including even religious life, there are some strange attempts to measure on the quality of religious experience in some communities. So calculation proliferates uh, uh, and involves uh, some objects which have been traditionally outside the board of calculation, and it does so by calculating the quality of those objects. So quality is the developed for the 
proliferation of calculation in all the dimensions of social life, in all the dimensions of human experience. So, uh, this uh, calculative proliferation has been the object of uh, a wide purpose of uh, philosophical, sociological, and anthropological debate. Uh, many scholars are questioning why uh, should we measure everything, why should we measure everything in even more precise details, and why should we measure objects that we did not measure some time ago. And when we calculate everything, uh, we do not know exactly why are we calculating everything. The uh, contemporary calculation appears to be unlimited and unconditional. If you, if you take a look to some uh, uh, Critical contribution on, on management, for example. You will find this idea of uh, measuring everything and uh, the uh, unconditional um, trait of this measurement. We cannot explain why we are measuring everything by measuring the quality of everything. Within organization and outside organization, it seems that we are applying to calculate everything uh, by measuring the point of everything and we do not exactly why. And it's very difficult to put a limit uh, to calculation. So the first point is that uh, the, the question of quality is uh, uh, ambiguous. The quality can be a very good thing. An uncontested value uh, could be a great, a great danger, could be something extremely controversial. And if we take a look to some uh, uh, perspectives uh, under which quality has been analyzed in, in the social, economic, and anthropological political debate, we find uh, very different positions. We find different arguments, which is very difficult to be put together. For example, one line of thought says uh, it's very good to, to calculate quality instead of calculating quantity because this means taking into account other dimensions of, of social life that uh, have not been uh, taken into account in traditional forms of measurements. Let's think about the uh, measurement of quality of life at the national level or the debate uh, on uh, for example, the index of gross uh, happiness in the state of gross national product, or the index about the uh, human development indicators. All this debate is based on the idea uh, of measuring uh, quality, uh, quality of life, quality of the environment, uh, quality of social relationship, uh, quality of community relationship, instead of measuring typical quantitative objects, typical economic objects. I don't know if you have uh, taken a look to the report coordinated by Stevens, Sam and FTC, uh, under the request of French government. It's very important report. Uh, I suggest you to, to take a look to this report. It's a publisher. The name of the report? Uh, it's a report uh, published by the Commission for the uh, Improvement of uh, Social measurement. Uh, basically, it's a commission coordinated by SEN, FITUC, and CDS. Uh, and the report has, has been um, uh, requested by French government. So, Sarkozy asked. Uh, this commission to produce a report uh, whose main aim is to go uh, beyond uh, typical economic uh, measure. The traditional way of measuring economic progress, economic development and social progress. So in this very wide report uh, you will find chapter two uh, 
uh, titled Quality of Life, which is uh, just a best relevance. It means that in order to improve our way of measuring social progress, we should not measure the GDP not only, but we should measure uh, quality of life, we should measure uh, quality of social relations, quality of the uh, uh, environment, quality of community relations, and all the aspects of social lives which cannot be uh, taken into account if we focus on quantitative objects. So from this point of view, I'm not referring to, to the report now, from this point of view, from this perspective, uh, measuring quality is a good thing. It means uh, that we, we can take into account the uh, totality uh, of human experience, of human relations, of human life. And we can avoid the uh, economic uh, reduction uh, of, uh, uh, of social life social experience. So there is a trend towards celebrating this transition from the calculation of typical quantitative objects to the calculation of, of quality. And producing new indicators based on quality instead of quantity. Another perspective which is also uh, very uh, important uh, is focused on uh, uh, and measurement of quality as a social process. So it means that uh, it's true that uh, calculating on quality could be controversial, but it's true that uh, the definition of what is quality and the definition of how quality is measured, how quality is calculated, uh, is uh, a social process uh, which implies that uh, the definition and the measurement of qualities can always be contested, are always provisional, can always be uh, transformed and rejected. Uh, so the focus here is in, on the uh, social and political uh, value of producing quality. By uh, debating uh, what is quality, Good quality, quality uh, for which purposes uh, we can uh, make calculation more political and more social and more open uh, and more contestable. For example, if you take a look to the sociological argument of Michel Callot and his colleagues, uh, the argument on the economy of quality uh, or the argument on calculation you will find this emphasis on calculation, quality and agency. Quality is measured uh, through the interaction of different knowledges, uh, different actors, human and non-human actors. Non-human actors means uh, quality procedures, means standards, uh, means rankings, uh, means uh, technical devices. And uh, all this web uh, of human and non-human actors continually produce forms of calculating, measuring, defining point. So the politicization of quality measurement is an opportunity for uh, for the need the hegemony of calculation. So in this, from, from this perspective, the idea is, is true that we, we calculate more and more things today. We calculate everything. But uh, all these calculations are more and more open, contestable, they are social, they are political, they are an opportunity uh, to involve people, to involve different views, different competencies. Knowledges. So, uh, the, all the calculative processes which have to do with quality are uh, social political. 
then there is another uh, macro perspective on polygon calculation, which is critical on, uh, on the relationship between the two, uh, two options. And from this perspective, where which is uh, close to some uh, codium perspectives in critical management, for example, or quality. From this perspective, uh, quality is uh, quality and quality technologies are geopolitical technologies. So, uh, technologies aimed at calculating social life. And this calculation is uh, complicit with neoliberal ideology, which means that from this perspective, uh, there is uh, an, an emphasis on the link between calculating everything by calculating the form of everything and uh, commodifying it, transforming everything into commodities, transforming everything into something that has to be managed uh, with market-oriented knowledge. Listening to uh, the wide critical debate on quality of universities or quality of hospitals, for example, in England, in USA, or in the US, there are a lot of contributions which focus on this uh, trying towards calculating quality of research, quality of teaching, uh, quality of education, quality of uh, uh, cheap education, uh, quality of uh, hospital management. And the idea is we do not know why are we calculating all this quality. Uh, we, do not, we do not know why are we speaking so much about quality. And the reason is that there is no other reason except the, uh, uh, the domination of a certain form of control and power, which is something that we nearly ideology. So calculating the quality of the university, calculating the quality of public services means uh, transforming uh, all these objects something that is managed uh, uh, and uh, is commodified, uh, is transformed into a commodity. Uh, so there is a link between calculation of quality, auditing, standards, indicate, indicators, and uh, putting, for example, university into the competitive process, transforming the university the uh, so on one hand, quality management, quality measurement is a disciplinary technology, a new form of discipline based on uh, inspecting quality, controlling quality, managing quality, everywhere. On the other hand, there is uh, uh, a focus on the quality ideology as a mask. We speak about quality, it seems a good thing, let's say, but in fact it's just a way to cover the dominance of old quantitative calculation, which is completely managerialization of the social, marketization of the social, commodification of the social. Of course, I, I, I'm still very briefly uh, simplifying uh, this very wide debate. But one of the basic ideas is that uh, quality is senseless because it is uh, an ideological mask. There is no reason to uh, speak about quality. The power of the language of quality, the so-called quality speak, in, in, in Anglo-Saxon uh, uh, debate, uh, there is a growing emphasis on, uh, a growing critical emphasis on this quality speak. 
why do we speak about quality all the day? Uh, speaking about chief planner, speaking about professor, speaking about the hospital management of transportation. Because quality is uh, something uh, which, from a conceptual point of view, is an illusion, is groundless, but from the perspective of power, of control, of uh, neoliberal transformation of society, a neoliberal transformation of our policy, a neoliberal transformation of uh, political life, it has a growing relevance. There are many, many, very interesting contributions on, on quality management in the from the perspective of anthropology. Uh, and all these contributions are, are quite critical to us. So, but the idea is uh, it's just a mask. So we, we should unveil the, the mask of quality to understand that we are speaking about, uh, about calculation. So when we speak about quality from this perspective, we speak about measure of quality, audit of quality, quality that can and should be measured, quality that can and should be calculated, quality that can and should be controlled. There is no other quality except a quality that can be transformed in quantity. So we speak about quality of university, but we are speaking about the quantification of quality, the transformation of quality, the subversion of quality. Quality sounds good, but in fact we are just calculating. Right? And we are just transforming every quality into auditable quality. Are you familiar with, with auditing? With the concept of audit and audit? Contribution of, of Michael Powell, for example, which is not from Bolton uh, on Cuba, uh, it is it's very important on, uh, for, for understanding uh, this old society, a society in which the uh, ritualization of control of measurement becomes uh, characteristic of social organization and management. It's very important that there is much code uh, in this contribution, this critical contribution of quality management. So we have uh, very different uh, perspectives on what quality is, uh, on how to understand the relationship between quality and calculation. It's a good thing, uh, it's a bad thing, it's, it's a danger, quality uh, is just a mask. Uh, and all these, uh, these perspectives, including uh, the, the social political perspective, uh, let's look at quality as an opportunity to be more social and more political. Uh, all these things are, are very important from my point of view. They deserve to be considered, uh, but they uh, do not exhaust. The very question of quality, the very problem of why quality, why are we calculating everything in terms of quality, why, why are we calculating every manifestation of human life, by calculating the quality of every manifestation of human life. This question remains in mind. Uh, and it remains uh, and meant to understand why cannot we avoid of speaking about quality, of nature quality, or referring to quality. Why the age of calculation is the age of quality? Why quality is so powerful today? Why quality is something more than a reference? It's a dogma for management public management, or public policy. Why? 
And in Matthew, I will mean, give you just some, some basic lines of, of, of my reflection, because it's just some uh, basic direction uh, in order to, to, to let you uh, make questions or just comments. But in my view, uh, you should understand that in order to understand the power of God, this strange power, this incredibly strong power of God, we should understand that it has to do with quality and the power of quality discourse. It has to do with the perfection of the uh, historical movement of calculation. With the perfection of the movement aimed at involving ever more completely human experience in the field, in the domain of calculation. This idea of calculation involving every aspect of human life more and more completely, more and more precisely, is a very important issue in contemporary philosophical debate. Is a very important issue, for example, for uh, code uh, analysis. And in my point of view, it is precisely by taking in court that this movement aimed at making the whole human experience character develops. It's not by chance, quality is not just a mass. Quality is not an accident, uh, quality is not an illusion, quality is not a mistake, quality is not just a passport. Something more, something which is needed for the calculation of the human uh, develops in, 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 in even more precise and complete terms. And the other, uh, the other uh, hypothesis that I will propose you is, is that the power of quality has to do with uh, the, the very sense, uh, the very meaning of the, the notion of enhancement of life. The idea of maximization of human life, optimization of human life, this empowerment of human life towards performance is also a very important issue in, in, in the field uh, of philosophical argument. In Foucault, is, is something extremely important. The need between calculation, biopolitical calculation, biopolitical knowledge, and the maximization of human life, optimization of all the dimension and aspects of human life. But from my point of view, we should understand that the specific, peculiar way in which human experience, in which human life, come to be subjected to this imperative from even a higher form. The, the peculiar way in which life is mobilized towards performance is maximized. It's exactly the enhancement of life in its ever increasable, calculable quality. When we speak today about integrated human development, and we say, uh, this idea of integrated human development is closely bound to improvement in quality of life. We are saying that uh, the maximization of human life is the movement towards an ever increasable calculable world. We have to calculate quality of all the dimension of human life in order to improve quality of all these dimensions, quality of social life, quality of family life, quality of educational life, quality of sexual life, quality of religious life. So 
we should understand that uh, from my point of view that the power of quality is linked to this perfection of this historical movement towards uh, calculating uh, the totality of human life and that uh, the ethical value of quality today is linked to the fact that uh, improving human life, uh, maximizing human life, enhancing human life means today uh, moving toward the maximization of quality of life. And this quality of life that uh, has to be maximized <laughs> has to be calculated. So we, we are here, uh, we are facing uh, a basic ambiguity in contemporary socio-economic and political life. We want to take into account all the dimensions of human life. And then it turns that this taking into account social relation, family relation, cultural relation, cultural life, educational life means calculating all these things, means accounting for all these things. So this radical ambivalence of, of the calculation. And all this is uh, a part of the way in which today life is maximized, is mobilized towards, towards performance. So quality is not just a uh, side element of the movement of calculating the human and maximizing the human and uh, mobilizing human life towards performance is at the very core from my point of view. So that's why quality is so powerful. And that's why quality is so controversial. And that's why quality is so difficult to, uh, to be left upon. That's why quality is something we should uh, speak about. But in order to understand uh, this, uh, this hypothesis that I was basically is do not consider quality within our frames, within our ideas of what is calculation, what is the political and social dimension of calculation, uh, what is the relationship between calculation and commodification. But let's try to understand calculation of the human, starting from point, by questioning the point. Let's try to take uh, quality seems in order to understand this, why I, I, I propose to you uh, this, uh, we should uh, uh, try to, to interrogate what does it mean calculating quality. There is, uh, let's say, a tendency of in considering calculation of quality as something which has to do with uh, uh, reducing quality to numbers, reducing quality to something quantitative. So quality is a good thing, and then is reduced uh, to mere numbers, uh, to quantitative, uh, to quantitative dimension. Uh, from my point of view, when we speak about calculation of uh, calculation of quality of life, calculation of uh, uh, quality of all the dimension of human lives. We should not immediately think about the quantification of quality. Calculation of quality does not mean quantification of quality. Does not mean reduction of the qualitative to the quantitative. Something different. It means a calculative transformation of quality. We should not uh, confuse uh, the calculation of quality with the quantification of quality. It's true that when we 
calculate quality, then we can transform quality into numbers by indicators, by standard, by rankings, and by measurements. But the very goal of this calculation of quality is not something that we can understand if we just focus on quantification of quality. We should try as difficult as this <laughs> might be or something else. We should try to understand, first of all, what is quality, what quality means in Western tradition, what does quality designate in Western tradition. If quality has to do with the uh, singularity, the particularity of the the fact that quality is very close to the human, something we, share, we are familiar with. We know that quality is something close to human. And the human is the domain of quality, and quality is the domain of everything human. Every manifestation of human life is something qualitative. And uh, the qualitative is the characteristic of human life. Why? Because quality in Western tradition designates singularity, particularity, something which is singular, which is particular, and something which is excellent in its singularity. So the calculation of quality uh, should be understood as the transformation of this very singularity into something that can be uh, can be measured, can be known, can be manipulated. It's something which is available. Calculation of quality means making this very singularity, this very particular trait of every manifestation of human life, of every dimension of human life, of the human as such into something which is available to the human, which is something which can be unconditionally known, unconditionally managed, unconditionally manipulated. Quality is something that in Western tradition is particularly close to the incalculable. We know that it's difficult, or it's impossible to unconditionally calculate uh, quality. Quality is something that cannot be easily compared, cannot be easily framed, cannot be easily known, cannot be easily manipulated. So, from, from my point of view, we should understand what does it mean that calculation of quality that uh, implies putting the, the very singularity of human life in the dimension of availability, mindability, yeah. knowability. This is the core of the movement thing that calculated for it. And if we understand this, <coughs> we, we do not have uh, any of understanding what that's mean. But from my point of view, we should start to understand that when we're speaking about calculating the human, by calculating the quality of the human, the quality of every manifestation of the human, the quality of human life, does not mean uh, immediately uh, quantifying quality, uh, reducing quality to numbers, but means transforming, calculatively transforming quality in something that can be unconditionally known, treated, manipulated. And to understand this, we, we, sh we should understand that this manipulation of the particular of singularity of everything singular, everything particular in human life, has much to do with the transformation of 
human life, in its singularity, in something which can be treated in terms of information. Today we live in an age in which we calculate, correlate by treating uh, quality as something on which we can have information. We want information on the quality of the environment, quality of education, quality of public services, quality of childcare, quality of family relation. We, we presume that the quality of everything can be treated in terms of information. And by being treated in terms of information is something that can be unconditionally communicated. And the very ethical uh, content of uh, human development has to do with this capacity of calculating the quality of all the dimension of human and social life, uh, uh, managing information, collecting information on the quality of human life, manipulating this information on the quality of human life, uh, and improving the quality of all dimensions of human life. So we should look, we should think of transforming quality in something that can be treated in terms of information more than just manipulating in quantitative terms uh, information, bits of information about human life. Today we, we manipulate bits of information about human life. We all know this. Social science and uh, natural science are uh, engaged in manipulating uh, piece of information of all the behaviors of humans. But to understand how can we uh, manipulate human life by manipulating bits of information, we should understand the phenomenon uh, by which quality is transformed in something that can be treated and communicated in terms of information. So we should start to understand what does it mean that the age of calculation, the age in which calculation proliferates, the age in which calculation involves the old, some objects that have been traditioned outside this range, is the age of quality and is the age of information. What does it mean? I don't know if we, you, you heard about uh, some anthropological uh, contribution of the uh, contrasparency, of the dominance of transparency in contemporary social, managerial, and political life. There are some, some very important contribution of uh, these, uh, the, the, the power of transparency today. Everything should be transparent. Every uh, human relation, every behavior, uh, every uh, activity, uh, every form of uh, human behavior uh, should be transparent, should be accountable, uh, should be communicated uh, in a transparent way. From my point of view, this basic point, uh, which has to do with relationship, calculation, and language, should be understood in this perspective, the perspective which is based on the relationship between quality, calculation, language, and information. And basically, when we speak about calculation of quality, and when we try to, to understand uh, what this is, we call calculation of quality, why we are calculating quality, why we are speaking about quality, we should think about quality as humans. We learn about quality assurance in organization, quality assurance in hospital, in universities, in, in, in public administration. And basically, calculating quality means securing quality, securing quality, securing uh, the, the uh, dimension of singular 
functionality of particularity in the space of comparability, of knowability, of manipulability, and in the dimension of language as information. Quality is something that on one hand seems to be non calculable and on the other hand has been transformed in something on which we want to have secure information. We want to be secure about the quality of everything. And the value of human development depends on uh, the way in which we are secure about the quality of all the dimensions of human life. So we should ask. Is the only uh, properly human way of developing the way based on securing and calculating all the quality of human life, of treating and manipulating information of uh, social, cultural, uh, religious, uh, educational life? This is a very uh, hard question because it seems that the answer is yes. Today, we live in an age in which development, human development, the mobilization of human life towards performance is closely linked with control, with management, with securing and calculating and securing calculate human life. But even in Nigeria uh, studies, uh, we find uh, this control towards this proliferation of calculation on one hand, and on the other hand, towards this incredible, strange power of all. So you should be it could be surprisingly in reading some contribution from the perspective of managerial studies, say, saying we, we are uh, discomforted about this imperative of national reality, and at the same time, we are discomforted about what quality has become today. We are not any more comfortable with quality, because we, we do not uh, recognize anymore the qualitative in what we call today quality, in this quality which has become uh, auto quality, measurable quality, calculable quality. So, uh, reflecting on calculation and quality, uh, reflecting on the values of the relationship calculation of quality, you know, on what calculating quality means, uh, can be uh, the basis for asking, uh, is there uh, a way uh, of thinking about development and progress which is not based on securing it, on unconditioned securing all human life in terms of information or communication? Is there uh, a development, a program in human development, which is not the same thing of mobilizing human life on the basis of an ever more precise calculation of the quality of human life? Calculate quality of human life will improve and, and we mobilize human life towards incredibly important. Is there another possibility of managing, of uh, deciding, of running business, of uh, thinking in political efforts, which is not based uh, on the imperative of calculation as security? Probably yes, but this is a matter of thought. Uh, it's something which can, cannot uh, just uh, 
uh, pretend to, to grasp the meaning of the game. Yeah? But uh, from my point of view, what, what is my uh, suggestion uh, before just coming in, into uh, the issue uh, with your question is that uh, it seems today that speaking about uh, quality of calculation means uh, uh, interrogating how do we calculate quality, what are the different ways of measuring quality, uh, can we debate about what quality, whose quality, who decides uh, what is quality, uh, can we make uh, the measurement of quality more social, more contestable? This is true. Uh, I, mean, I, I agree on the fact that this can be uh, a possibility, it's a good thing. But a public debate on the age of quality, the age of calculation, the meaning of quality in social, economic, and managerial life could be also an interrogation of the very root of the relation between quality and calculation. On the very root of an idea of development and mobilization which is based on the unconditional securing of each and every dimension of social life. So, even the, the public question of quality can be something different from uh, the debate on different forms of quality measurement, different indicators, different uh, procedures for calculating quality, uh, on making this calculation uh, open to uh, public contestation. I believe this is important, but uh, it is time to uh, think about this uh, in a more open way and to, uh, to face the enigma or the enigmatic for the power of quality by questioning uh, as difficult as uncomfortable might be the very link between quality and, and, and calculation, which is uh, something which cannot be done uh, if we uh, if we stay uh, within the frame, sub, uh, certain interpreted frames uh, based, for example, on quality as an illusion, quality as a danger, quality uh, uh, as something good, quality as a promise. Uh, we, we should uh, we should think quality and calculation more in that in order to, to question management, calculation, and government uh, in contemporary societies. Do you have to, 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 to stop, stop here? No, we can have a little bit to have a little discussion for the moment. It's interesting, I don't know if you talk. Yes, I have several questions, um, and maybe a critique. Um, so, the first, the first uh, it seemed to me that you said, so we have to rethink the link between quality and calculation, and from your presentation it seemed to me that you were suggesting a different way of calculating quality which doesn't quantify quality, so that it reduces it to quantity, but that still allows you to, as you said at very, various times, to unconditionally know quality, so that uh, then we can uh, we can, we can maybe you know, improve it or, or, or make it manageable. So, um, if I understood, if this is your position, and I understood it correctly, um, the critique I can feel is that um, when you say that quality, so you first say quality is the domain of the singular and the particular, and then you say, but yet, you know, it would be interesting if we found ways to unconditionally know quality. The very idea that you can know something unconditionally means that you're knowing something by abstracting it from its own circumstances. So you are making the, you are abstracting the singular and the particular from its singular and particular environment, which makes it so singular. So um, my question, what, seem, what it seems, the risk that I see in this is that this idea that you can harness quality and make it kind of an abstract thing could be the last movement in the, in the disembedding effort of economics, which Karl Polanyi has spoken about in The Great Transformation. That's one, um, um, one, one objection. And then secondly, maybe, what if unconditional knowability 
is precisely the boundary which we are not supposed to tread in order not to lose quality itself. And maybe the study of quality is not so much about calculation and management, but is about participation, empathy rather than transmission of information, something similar to um, um, the Diarios de Motocicleta of Ernesto Che Guevara, rather than something that uh, an economist does uh, by looking at, say, uh, data or econometrics, or by thinking of, of new ways of uh, calculating quality. So, this is more of an external critique from your position, from your position, I guess. But I think it's something that maybe is important to discuss. And then I have a second observation. You said, can quality measurement be made more social? That's a very interesting uh, thing, because you, you really hint to the problem of contestability, which I think you also said was central in thinking about quality. My question is, once, once we accept the idea that quality can be measured and can be ranked, and my, my quality is ranked as well, whether I want it or not, the moment I want to feel the critique, I am no longer speaking as a peer, but I am speaking as somebody, as somebody that has been ranked. To give you an example, if we have university rankings, and if we didn't have university rankings and the IUC was not ranked, we could criticize, say, Harvard or Oxford um, or Macquarie. Uh, but once we are ranked, or we are not ranked, when everybody else is ranked, we are speaking as an outsider, and that already reduces the chances we have of giving a meaningful contribution. So you see this, for instance, um, in, in economics, you see very, very often that um, many rankings of economics PhDs are done by mainstream economists. And uh, interestingly enough, mainstream PhDs are usually the ones that are ranked. So you don't find uh, UMKC or the new school. Uh, uh, and so who is doing the rankings? And then can the new school still be a meaningful person that takes part in this debate once it has been ranked as being stupid, so to say? Uh, your first question, uh, you are right, but I did not say at all that according to me, uh, quality uh, should be uh, calculated uh, by, by making it unconditionally knowable. I say that when we face the phenomenon, when we think about it, what does it mean calculating? And what does it mean calculating quality? We should not immediately think about quantification. The very core of calculation is something we should uh, understand in terms of the transformation of quality, the calculative transformation of quality, which is something that is not the same, is not immediately the same of quantification of it. It's something that can be complicit. Huh? We don't have time to, to just look into this very important uh, philosophical issue. But my suggestion is calculating point means making, uh, not, this is not my, my view, not my hope, it's just what uh, my idea on, on how should we think about that. Calculation, the very root, the very core of calculation, is, has to do with making something available, making something unconditionally man manipulated, magic. Of And calculating quality, which in during Western history uh, designate in particular the singular and the human in its singularity means putting singularity in the field of unconditional manipulability, which means making quality unconditionally treatable in terms of information. Can we have information about quality? Can we uh, say quality, can we put quality in the dimensional language if language is a mere means of communication and information? The age of calculation, says Heidegger, is the age of information. And 
we, we can say today, the age of the perfection of calculation is the age of point. But my point was, uh, we should be aware that uh, thinking about quality immediately in terms of quantification of everything uh, could lead us far from the right way. Yes, uh, my, my idea is uh, many, uh, many perspectives on uh, calculation of human life and calculation of quality and the transformation of quality today are based on this idea of calculation means quantification. When I see quantification in numbers, uh, then I know what calculation is. Numbers has to do with calculation. Very much. Can you briefly? So uh, maybe my point was actually the reason it was an external critique is that I see the point, and you're, say, you're not saying we should uh, cal the calculation of quality means quantification of quality. I, I understood mm -hmm. it to begin mm -hmm. with. My objection was maybe more radical. It was the fact that we can talk about quality and we can communicate about quality. For me, it embeds a kind of a social engineering posture. And um, that was the posture that I was criticizing. And so I was saying maybe uh, an, so sort of an external critique mm -hmm. to the idea that you know, in the age of uh, calculation we can talk about quality is that well, maybe we can't talk about quality. What we can do is, as individuals, participate in quality. So if I want to see the quality of an institution, I go and I stay in that institution. But I cannot talk about the quality of that institution but, without uh, being. But why are we obliged? to speak about it. That's a point. Yes. You can say, I will not speak about it. I, I don't want to calculate quality. I don't want to measure quality. I don't want to produce indicators for quality. I don't want to deal with quality rankings. When you say, uh, I have this idea of making things and living my life and having my relationship and participating in a lesson uh, without calculating the quality of our relationship. But the point is, can we question why quality is so powerful? Why it seems uh, that we cannot avoid to measuring and calculating the quality of teaching, the quality of learning, the quality uh, of doing everything. So when you say, I don't want to talk about quality, uh, you say something important because the point that I was suggesting is that the calculation of quality should be understood in terms of securing quality in the dimension of calculation, which means securing quality in the dimension of information, which means securing quality in the dimension of language when language is only information and communication. Language is a means of information and communication. If language is just a means of information and communication, then uh, speaking about it, putting quality, the quality, the single, the particular, the uh, the particular which is in uh, me talking to you and you talking to me, putting this in the dimensional language means calculating. So th th that's the point. My idea is uh, let's think about quality of calculation by questioning what does calculation mean, which is a very, very I think, hard question. I think we can put it in this way. Calculation is a way an indicator of the quality. You cannot measure the quality itself because it's an abstract and something very big. You cannot just talk about it. That's why we try to put an indicator which help us to know if there's a quality or not. Like, as example, you and when they talk about the development of a human being, they talk about the life, how old, how long you live. So they don't know, so for them, like, to know to which age you were alive, like eight years old, that means that there's an indicator that you have a good life condition because you don't, you don't have a health problem, then you live in a good 
condition. So this is an indicator, an indicator to know how quality is, how is you are living in a good condition. Example, other example of the World Bank and the, the both of other organizations, when they make projects, they say the indicators, they put like 50% of uh, the people involved in the project uh, will get a job. Mm -hmm. So it's a, an indicator for the how the, how the project performed, how was well it's good or not. So it's it is not the quality itself because uh, for me I think quality is something very big. It's very important. We cannot just look deep in it because it's very difficult to manage each. I mean each situation. So we put the numbers to indicate the quality. So the numbers are not the, the quality itself. Yeah, I think you were speaking about. I don't think you were speaking about numbers necessarily. You know, I think that's the point you were saying is that maybe quality calculation should maybe go beyond numbers as well, but it should still be communicatable. That's I guess what you were saying. Yes. Yes. Sampling can be treated. Uh, I suggest to, to reflect on what information means when calculations uh, when we say something that we can speak about, something we can talk about, we should think about the language <laughs> and we should think what is language. Maybe if language is some, it's just a means for information, communication and information means for transmitting messages, mm -hmm. or maybe language, language is something else. Maybe I just, my, my only, the only thing that I find a bit unsettling is that we assume that language is purely a tool for this, that we use for descriptive uses in this case. So we are just describing quality. But I feel that language also has a very performative element to it. So it also commands something. So when we, um, when, when we talk about quality and we then use it to compare, and we say, well, then at some point when something is it's going to have a better quality than something else, and the moment you say that you know something, you just observe that something is a better quality. This is this is already projecting on something on, on the worst quality per person or object or institution, a kind of image of backwardness that because well, you don't have the same quality of life. And I, I see this as being a bit problematic. I mean, maybe it's something that we don't um, and we don't even notice we're doing. You see, that's why I think it's very. Uh, Uh, if someone asks you, uh, 
Beethoven is better or lower on the quality of Beethoven is higher or lower compared to the quality of Mozart. I'm just wondering about something you were uh, talking about uh, the, that nowadays we stop thinking about the economic growth and the GDP and we start to think about how many growth. And I'm wondering what kind of calculation they will uh, make in order to, to measure the happiness growth. They make a lot of calculation. Like what? They just make a lot of calculation. Is it efficient? Is it just a reflection of the happiness? I mean, if you have money, you are more happy if you are than if you are poor. You can. For example, if you take a look, I just to take a look to this report, the economic growth of Italy in 1980. You see the point. We, we want to calculate well-being in all its dimensions. We want to calculate happiness. So how we can, can calculate happiness? We have two ways of calculating happiness, basically. One is, there is a consensus that happiness um, is linked to the environment that you live, the mind that you have, the social relation that you have, the family that you have, the community that you have, friends that you have. So you can say you are happy if you have all these objective components. But then we can act. This is, this is very, very, very important. How do we calculate happiness today? Then there is another dimension of happiness calculation which is subjective dimension of happiness calculation. It means I come to you and say, are you happy or not? Do you have fear, do you have pride, are you anxious? And you can say, yes, I'm very happy, or no, not so much. Yesterday I was happy, today I'm not happy, tomorrow I'm not happy. But then you have to uh, securely manage this subjective perception. Because you don't have any objective counterpart. When, when we speak about well-being, happiness, pride, when we speak about psychological states, it's something very subjective. So calculation of these subjective perceptions means, for example, and this example are very useful start thinking about that. See. I ask you, are you happy? You say yes. Then I ask you, your, your colleagues, do you think he's happy? And if they say no, and you say yes, it means that something is wrong. So I have an objective uh, way of normalizing if you want, this subjective perception. But then I have another way of calculating subjective happiness, which is putting some electrons on your brain. And all these things are mobilizing for calculating happiness. And we should ask, why are we calculating everything to the point of calculating happiness, pride, uh, religious experience, family life, teaching a child. What does it mean? Right? What this is that we call calculation? It means, what does it mean? Calculate. It means quantifying, it means comparing, uh, it means uh, treating things, manipulating things. What does it mean, calculating happiness? It means quantifying happiness. All it means transforming happiness in something that can be treated in terms of information. Happiness can be quantified, transforming in numbers. That's what the economist of happiness do. Says your happiness is fine. But in order to be transformed in, in numbers, your happiness uh, to be transformed in something, uh, to be framed, formatted as something that can be treated as information. 
your happiness, something that can be available to yourself and to me. So when we speak about calculation of quality, we speak about different things. You refer to uh, the dimension of who is calculating, uh, what is the power relation calculating, which is something true, something important. Who is producing the things? Who is producing the rentals? Uh, what are the power uh, effects of rentals? What are the, uh, the power implications, so to speak, of producing rentals of the US? How these rankings can be more uh, contestable, more open, uh, more open to public debate and contestation. That is the point and the dimension, the other dimension. That is that's why the issue of quality is so complicated, it's so unfair, it's so hard to manage because it, it, uh, Implies considering uh, different issues, which are uh, which are considered different. Uh, they they lead to different space of of question. The social construction of quality, uh, the contestability of quality measurement, the form of quality measurement, how quality is defined, how quality is measured. How quality is calculated? Uh, what are the uh, social, political implications of this? On one hand, on the other hand, the question: What does it mean calculating quality? Why are we calculating everything by calculating quality? There are two different spaces to question, and we should understand that when we uh, we deal with the progress of calculation and we probably, we surely deal in the future with uh, progress of this form of calculation. Calculation of happiness, calculation of well-being, calculation of the income. Calculation of something that yesterday was not calculated. Something that was deemed to be non-calculated. Okay, if I say to you, let's, we have a community of religious people. Can we calculate the quality of their religious life? Or should we calculate the quality of their religious life? Can we? Or is something that uh, disturbs as we need to calculate the quality of their religious experience? Religious life is something that can be calculated. Uh, I have a question that with this, within this question about quality of religious life. I mean, uh, what will be taken into account if you will speak about quality of religious life? And also, what will be the results? Normative plans, so could you, could you say that quality of orthodox religious life is better than quality? No, no, of I, I'm not speaking about, uh, I hope that we will never see uh, a, a, a calculative comparison between uh, religious religions. Yeah, but how do you calculate the quality? Oh, fortunately, these experiments of calculating religious life are still uh, very much, uh, but there are, uh, you can find on, on, on the internet, uh, some uh, uh, community, religious community. Yes, okay, we come here every Saturday, every Sunday, every Friday. Uh, we come here to pray uh, and to live together uh, our religious life. But there, there are standards I to do this. Uh, for instance, I could think of, uh, say, that a quantity of members in a religious congregation. No, no, no. that could be a one standard. No, another, another indicator can be how much do you pray? As a member of our community. Yeah, yeah. So what, how many times do you pray? Frequency of worship in general. But how could we check about quality on the, this kind of quantity? I don't know. That, that's, 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 that's something on the basis of which we ask. Why are we calculating the income? But someone, someone might say, 
What does it mean to cultivate your happiness? Is your happiness something that can be cultivated? But it is cultivated, and not by some marginal communities, but some lower price for your economics. And you know what kind of indicators, what kind of procedures, what kind of methods do we use for calculating happiness? Would we ask ourselves, how many time, how much time during the day uh, do you leave uh, feeling yourself happy or depressed or anxious? Can we do this? We do this. Why? Why are we calculating a and we don't have another method to compare because we need to compare everything and everybody is comparing something with something else and we just take the one method which, which seems very easy for us and we just try to compare to make some results for us to make some you know, comparison. Yeah, but the point is why should we, we calculate this object? Why the whole human experience comes to be calculated? I'm sure that throughout that presentation you, you have asked this question many times and here is my tentative answer. I think people call, uh, calculate quality because it is useful for policy makers, for individual decision making and for groups of interest. So since they are often confronted with many options, uh, many possible choices, they, have, they, they cannot take those decisions at random. They, they do it because they, there is something that they are pursuing. Um, so, for instance, in the, in the example you gave of university rankings, um, an individual basically wants to figure out where should he go to study. And uh, he bases his opinion on other decisions that the rest of the people in this community have taken before and what they say about it. So I don't think it's necessarily because, uh, say, a newspaper has an agenda on dictating which is the best university. Uh, they are just publishing those rankings because uh, it will attract viewership and, uh, and well, the, the readers do appreciate it. Now, in the case of the policy makers, why should they compare, for instance, uh, environment against economics? Because maybe an economic measure will have an impact on the environment or vice versa. So, um, if they gave up completely on, the, on measuring quality, then which one should they pick? Or on what ground should they make a decision? But why do you calculate happiness? Um, well, with happiness, I, mean, I think it's a very trivial uh, idea of what? <laughs> Because uh, I imagine, I mean, if, if you find in a newspaper that says uh, Finland is the most happy country in the world, um, they are using some standards to measure that. So, uh, and they are often very cultural. So they might say that they might use a, a standard to say that um, the tidiness of, of family relationships. They might use uh, well economic uh, well-being and, and such and such. You might contest their standards, but uh, nonetheless, at least they are telling you what those standards are. Yeah, but they are uh, always uh, coming back to the different perspectives. When, when, we, when we ask, when someone asks about a common question about, or entirely calculation of quality, uh, you can, uh, it could refer to how do we calculate. Uh, how uh, standards, indicators, rankings are produced, uh, what form of uh, social processes, agents, uh, uh, calculative agencies, uh, uh, human and non-human web of interactions are involved in the calculation. Uh, how the definition and measurement of quality of standards for university or uh, indicators of national well-being, uh, how they are produced, what form of uh, knowledge are indicated. Uh, and then you can ask what form of power uh, are uh, involved in this process. Uh, what are the effects of these rankings of standards? 
then on the other side, dimension which is not here, not here, it's just another dimension. You can ask me, why are we calculating everything, including religious life or happiness or pride? Because it guides individual decision making. So uh, if you want to calculate religious life, I mean, if they actually did that, it means basically that some individual is looking for a religious congregation to attend to, for instance. And uh, why should they cal uh, choose the Lutherans over the Catholics? Um, may maybe that, that's why they are actually reading yeah, that. But, that but the point is, uh, what that doesn't mean that. Uh, my relationship with God is calculated. What does that mean? Is what does it mean to have information about the relationship that I have with God? Or what does it mean to have information on my happiness? No, good. It's what people that are uninformed about those things precisely that look for this yeah, yeah. Why are we, I don't know if you, but why, when, when we when we hear about uh, calculation of uh, the teaching uh, experience or learning experience or religious experience or uh, local identity or uh, happiness, that's not happiness. Why are we uh, in a way, disconfort and surprise at the start. What is involved in, in, in calculating it? What is involved in calculating the internet? It's not, we, we cannot, we are not referring here to who is calculating, who, uh, who is producing these indicators, how the indicators are producing. We are just questioning. Uh, basically, what does it mean to, to calculate everything, each and every dimension of life? It's just important for the policy makers also. Yeah, but this is, this is not an answer, it's, 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 uh, <coughs> it's an answer to why. Yeah. No, it's, it's an answer, to, I mean, uh, if you calculate the, the happiness uh, of People. Uh, of course, there is someone who will, uh, who will produce uh, this calculation or, or this, this measurement. But what does it mean that contemporary humanity means a thing uh, and acts as if happiness can be calculated? I think it's all about the marketing and advertising. I think everybody trying to make people equal. For example, when they measure happiness, they said that everybody will be happy if they don't have money, if they don't have family, health, and everything. So they made a criteria, which are very, very, I mean, basic. And they decided that everyone, everyone will be happy if they will have this criteria, for example. And it's just marketing, some kind of marketing way, marketing decision, advertising, and everything. I think it's like this. Well, the, when, uh, when you say uh, to me uh, the, the driver of calculation is basically uh, the market, market logics. You refer to uh, a very uh, diffused, a very uh, popular uh, way of understanding the uh, the reason of calculating it. When I was referring to uh, cold analysis uh, on, on the calculation, on the calculation of the solution, uh, the idea there is uh, we calculate everything uh, because this leads to this functional uh, to treat social life uh, in terms of market law of marketing processes. So we, we calculate universities uh, because by calculating quality and by making rankings, uh, we transform the university in 
something uh, you can put on the market in competitive uh, organization, in, in organization which follow the same logics of, of business. What if um, we calculate everything uh, because we always have calculated everything? Earlier, actually, when you were speaking, you know, I, I noticed that you said something which I found very telling because that's how a lot of, even myself, think about things. You said, well, you know, there are Nobel Prizes who are calculating these things. And actually, Nobel Prizes are people who have, so to say, been ranked according to a particular criteria. So because they have been ranked and they say that we should rank, then we go on and rank things and we calculate things. What if, I mean, ultimately, our need to calculate things to make decisions based on calculations is ultimately purely contingent. It's a cultural contingency. It's something that we do because we have been educated into a particular type of education that assumes that that's how people decide, and therefore we do that. But um, this is it's just contingent. It's, there's nothing uh, natural or essential about it. Maybe, maybe we could think of other ways of, well, Maybe there are other ways, but our own cultural predicament, which is also my own, I don't exclude myself from it, affects the way we do things. I, I will left the uh, answer open. Uh, I will not speak about natural or essential, because natural or essential means something. Uh, we should be very careful in, uh, yeah. including some, some, in using some words. But the, your, your idea, for example, we do not know exactly uh, why are we, are we measuring it. Decision making, that's the, that's the answer for why. Yeah, it's your answer. But I mean, there are, there are some, uh, some uh, experts, for example, coming from, from the field of magic, micro power, for example, which, uh, which integrates. It's made, we, we are measuring everything with the organization. And uh, we do not why if we, we uh, uh, consider uh, the, uh, if we want to explain the technical managerial reason of measuring everything, we do not have any answer. We do not why we are measuring in uh, ever more precise details all the organizational life. Probably, he says in an article, we do this for cultural and psychological reasons rather than for technical reasons. It's something close, uh, if I understood, to, to your perspectives. Uh, I'm not sure uh, that the uh, imperative of securing everything uh, can be understood in psychological or cultural terms. This is a, a tendency. Uh, we calculate everything because we are obsessed today uh, by uh, the, uh, the uh, goal of being secure. The proliferation of risk in the risk society uh, means proliferation of control, means being obsessed with security. So, uh, controlling everything, doing everything, uh, in all the uh, procedures, and uh, ranking everything, uh, and uh, measuring uh, all the aspects of social and, and managerial life. Uh, has to do with some obsession for control for security, which is uh, connected to the proliferation of this. It's some piece, so to speak, a cultural, psychological interpretation of the age of, of security and the age uh, of control. And if, if you take a look to some uh, Contribution in the field of management, you can find this, this kind of interpretation. I suggest you uh, to leave the um, question and to understand uh, why are we putting, uh, are we uh, considering within the frame of the 
tools for uh, developing our society, for improving uh, our life, uh, for uh, improving our economies, uh, all the dimension of human experience. Of course, policy makers will use and we demand, it seems that they demand more and more information, more and more rankings, more and more measures. But the point is, why uh, do we accept and, and that everything comes in the box, in, 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 the, in the calculative uh, range? And if we speak about happiness, for example, and we calculate uh, subjective uh, happiness. It means that uh, we move towards calculating uh, the quality of all human life, not just considering uh, economic or environmental uh, conditions, uh, but considering directly and ever more precisely Calculable uh, determinants of the being. So it means, my question uh, why are we calculating? means why uh, human development today uh, means improving the quality of human life. It's nothing natural. Should we improve? How about happiness? You mentioned the following method. You just ask 10 people, say how happy you are on a scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> Would you consider that to be an accurate reflection of how happy they are on average? Would you consider that to be? That kind of measuring to be at least sort of an objective. And uh, for instance, if you want to compare happiness in Italy and happiness in the United States, and you simply ask, say, one million people in each country, say how happy you are on a one to ten scale, and each of them says, uh, well, whatever, and eventually you find an average. Well, obviously, what uh, the, the expert of measurement of happiness says, and in this report you find um, a summary of comments on how to measure well-being uh, things like well-being, uh, happiness, and quality of life. Uh, I thought there is uh, an objective side of measurements. Then there is a subjective side of measurement, which is the one I'm going to refer to. And then there is attempts to, uh, let's say, objectify the answer to the question. You say, I have it. And you say yes or no, but the point is that only you know what does it mean. I, I, I cannot, uh, I, I do not have any objective uh, way uh, of deciding if what you say is true or not. Are you really happy? So the experts, uh, those who calculate happiness, they say, let's try to ask the other people. What do they think about your happiness? One. Let's try, for example, to calculate how many times to smile. Let's try to put on your brain some uh, measuring uh, devices. And would that be an objective? That means making subjective perfection objective. But the point is that we are calculating uh, something as can your happiness. So they are asking me to say if you are happy or not. They ask you, and they ask me. And then they look at your smile, and then they do some. Uh, this is why I believe in this kind of vision. Happiness, especially if you cannot uh, measure the rate of happiness, or you cannot usually GDP, GNP reflect the happiness. For me, economists, the income, the situation, 
uh, my situation will reflect the happiness. But you cannot say, I will ask everybody, maybe someone doesn't have show, doesn't have anything, just have a social relation, he's happy at that moment. So he'll smile and say, I'm happy. But does that reflect anything? Does it reflect anything? The reality is just like calm, like what they say, like this GDP and GDP. And with this happiness, there is no reality. For me, I accept all the ideas of quality, the other idea of quality of education, quality of health, quality of life. But, but when it comes, no, I okay, I find it stimulating. But when you talk about uh, rate of happiness and increasing rate of happiness, there's no, no logic in that, you know? That's interesting. I mean, uh, your, your position is that uh, I see that in, in uh, today there are some uh, experts, uh, which is widely accepted. Uh, this is a goal. Uh, it's made not just by strange people, but very serious guy. Uh, Could be, but the point is. No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying anything, anything against you. I'm just trying to comment and say, uh, I do not believe this. Uh, I do not accept. I, I don't understand why should we mention that this is a thing. Why, for instance, maybe should we consider this? I should consider other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to satisfy our curiosity and not necessarily that of the policy maker, but just of common people that are just curious, I guess. Or, or do you think that the policy maker is actually looking at these reports? And I'm not curious of you being happy or not. You know? Ah, but some people are, I mean, so some, like, yeah, sometimes I, I, they're I curious about what I think happiness is something relative. You cannot, you cannot say, I mean, what do you mean by I'm happy or not? I might be today happy, not tomorrow I'm not happy. Maybe something maybe today is happy. It's not, it's not uh, something that is. a way of approaching. You say, uh, I see that we are calculating something that I, I don't think we can calculate. This is the first point. Second point. What, what kind of sample you will take in order to, to calculate okay. the sample? Because usually, in order to make the assessment and to make survey and to know the happiness level, you should make samples. There's an equation to divide the survey and to make questions and interviews with people. Which sample? How do you look at this sample? How do you know maybe these people are rich, maybe these people are poor, maybe these people are it's related to how much money you have, how much... That is not, that is not the point. Uh, when I say these measures are made by uh, CEOs, by serious economists, by serious scholars, means that all these elements are taken into account. Of course. When we, when we uh, calculate uh, quality of life at the national level, then we calculate economic uh, determinants, uh, environmental, community participation, political, and then we also calculate uh, happiness, well being, and of course, we, 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 we use uh, the uh, same methodological uh, soundness that we use with environment. We try to... to so how do we get improved if we found that the level of happiness in this country is low and we want to improve the level of happiness? Uh, so what is the strategy which we should use in order to improve the happiness? Yeah. Because if, if you talk about economic and income, GDP, GNP, you know, you have to make some strategies, you do Imagine that you just calculate the happiness. And, and imagine that you, uh, your result says in this community, people is not happy. Something like this, people is not happy. And you know somehow that the happiness of these people does not only depend on a number of conditions. Because if it's so many depends on the number of conditions, you can say this people is not happy, I will improve uh, economic uh, values uh, and so and uh, environmental quality, I will improve uh, uh, space of socialization, I will improve the level of education. But then if you are measuring of the subjective it means that there is something that cannot be, uh, uh, that does not, is not directly or indirectly linked with this determinant. So, if there is something which is not 
Mainly uh, on all these subjective conditions, how do you improve having happiness? Or and then with the story, it would be this the reason. The level of happiness is low because there is no income, so it should help. So it will go all back to the economic situation of GDP and GDP. So it is just a cover, and then we go back to the GDP and GDP. You see how? Because why a person should be? Yes, it would be like this. Because if you give the person a good uh, income and he have fine income, it's fine. His income is okay. He's enjoying the normal things in life. He can go work. He can enjoy the things. He can go out. He can do whatever he wants in the normal uh, society. Of course, why he will be not happy? No, I will be happy if you give me the minimum of what I need. This is satisfaction level. This is what economists call that satisfaction level of each person. No. So if you give me the the minimum which I need in my life, of course I will be satisfied and happy. Satisfied. We can't use the word happy itself. We can say satisfied. We are satisfied with our own. But we and that's why I'm saying if we talk and we we make more logic, logical and rational about this topic, you see. Then the point is, if you give good economic conditions and situation for people, they will be satisfied. And if you will not give them, they will not be satisfied. If you are poor, you will be less happy than if you are rich or middle class. You say that's rich and poor, but there are some people who are poor and they are happy. But the point is, if you are a middle class person, maybe you will be more, of course, more happier than a poor one. If he doesn't have job, if he doesn't have income, he can enjoy the, the things he needs. And that's why I'm saying, like at the end of the story, if you read, even if you will calculate the happiness, and you will find why these people are not happy, there are many reasons. The main reason always the economic situation, the economic situation, the income, the financial issues are the main reason always. The main reason always, and, and the basic to have I think uh, for the life. This is my opinion. Oh, I'll be very provocative. Uh, you say uh, the point is not to maximize. But to, uh, to reach uh, uh, a level which is which can can make us satisfied. satisfied. But as you know, is it rational not to maximize? But is it rational to, to to calculate the happiness? No, I mean calculate for happiness can be is absolutely rational and might be unreasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. What do you know about what rights you mean? What reason you mean? What character you reason? We are touching here you know, just by uh, starting by asking why are we calculating everything, including happiness? Huh? We are opening the question. Huh? What does it mean calculate? Me be rational if reason for us is calculated reason. What does it mean that something is absolutely rational but not at all reasonable? Are we nominating some very important philosophical issues? Rational and reasonable. But if you if I say Listen, I'm, I'm bored and not satisfied with measuring GDP. Because this is what you find if you just uh, search on the, on the web about the evolution of measurement of economic progress, of development. You will find millions of pages of reports uh, of indicators based on this idea. We should not measure traditional economics. So, I'll give you an example. Since we shouldn't, for me, I agree 100. percent I don't, I don't agree with you. We should just agree with no, yeah. measurement of economic GDP, GNP of the society, and not about happiness because happiness is unmeasurable. It's impossible to measure. This is not So, if really we should measure the happiness, and the happiness is coming not because of the, the GDP, not not for economic reasons, you know? Then why is the Arabic revolution, the Arabic Spring? All the people in the Arabic world, why are they making the revolution? Because of the financial situation. They are not happy. They make the revolution. What's the main reason? Because they don't have a job. They 
didn't have money, didn't have income, they were desperate, so they made this revolution. So happiness is a reason of the economic situation. So happiness is coming if you give the people a good job, a good money, a good financial issues. To, to be fair, I'm, I'm not saying uh, it's a good thing that we calculate happiness. I'm saying that those who believe Okay. Can, can, I, because I think about this two years ago about the level of happiness, and this is the first country did this in Bhutan, this country beside China. And when I hear that, about the president is talking about the happiness, I was extremely surprised, you know. Because I think in a developing country like this, we should care more about the economic situation and to develop the level of life. Your position is very clear. Your position is very clear. I'm just trying to, to say these people who believe that we should go behind measuring. The economic. Uh, okay. This people, they think they, they reason in this way. What is more important than the uh, Nothing. Nothing. Then what is more rational in our, for, uh, for, for Western English, than maximizing what is important? Yeah. So, we should try to maximize our Maybe I will some, some. This is again. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will not say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when, when we say rational, reasonable, we are again hinting to some crucial philosophical issues. You should not say. Yeah, I don't know if I, I would just say I'm like, If you look at this, They were first talking about rebuilding the infrastructure after the Second War. And then they started to think about the market and the economic situation, how we should improve the market. In the Western country, after this step, they started to talk about social conditions. They started to talk about gender balance, they started to talk about equality, about the human rights, which means almost it's a little bit closer to happen because instead of thinking now about economical issues, we start to think about social issues. I can say that this we can think about it in Western countries or more developed countries. We have uh, the economic situation is good, the social condition is fine, so we can think about happiness or we can search about vision for happiness. But when you look at developing countries or the countries who are less developed than others and they still need a lot in order to, to get a normal level of life, so we shouldn't think about, the, about uh, happiness and we should think about, um, yeah. So I would, I, I would agree with this. Well, at this point, like measuring the happiness things just in Western countries and not in other part of the world. This is my point. No? Well, your point now is that uh, happiness is uh, measuring happiness is, let's say, luxury that yeah. the that, that Western countries. Western countries, but, yeah. But uh, the point, uh, the question that remains is that, and it's a question that you also uh, refer to. Is happiness something that can be calculated or should be calculated? Is something non calculable in human life? Is the human uh, as the human something uh, non calculable? Can, can we live uh, without calculating everything? I think that everything thing is important, but it's a logical and rational issue. I mean, if you calculate the quality of education, quality of health, you know, all that's important because it's all important in making decisions and strategies, even for development of the country or whatever. But when we look at, I mean, yes, I think it is important, and I think it's all related to decision makers. I, I think it's just individuals that calculate the things that matter to them. So. For those curious people that like to think about which country is the happiest, then they are the ones that make the calculation. And yeah. A policy maker might not, might not care at all about that and not, and not calculate it. Uh, I mean, for me, it's also, I cannot understand the people that follow, for instance, these tabloid things in the UK, like, say, the marriage of William. And, but yet, there are people that do it. You know? and I think it's the same with the calculation of happiness. Yeah, probably. But uh, you should consider that the, when, we, when we speak about uh, this idea of integrating human development 
measuring quality of life, measuring character. Yeah. We are not speaking about about annoyed or because we are speaking about uh, the of uh, side of uh, political and political life and and how and policy that and how how can does that influence the policy making that's the question. The point is that uh, for example French government Asked these economists to produce uh, a report on uh, going beyond traditional measurements. So, that, just a question that occurs to me is why Sarkozy, instead of making this uh, effort, doesn't simply walk in the banlieue of, of Paris and he will see <laughs> what the, the problems of the people are? So isn't there a hypocritical idea about this, you know, uh, hiding behind these fears, this, so we, okay, we improve this, we improve that, and then they keep the, the same business as usual, and at the same time they feel happy about themselves because they really did something. They feel secure. They feel secure, but they can also prove that they did well. This is the ridiculous aspect. This is, this is another dimension of the... Another side of the debate. Uh, I say that uh, within uh, uh, Freudian perspectives and outside Freudian perspectives, uh, there is a lot of uh, critical debate on, on poetry, and the direction of this debate concerns uh, what uh, some, some scholars call the nullification of substantive policy. It means that measuring quality, doing rankings, producing indicators, and uh, the performative efforts of all this in policy implies that the real content, the uh, substan substantive content of policy, better education, a better uh, living condition and, and poverty uh, and uh, the real uh, life, for example, in hospitals uh, or in, uh, in universities, they are just uh, hiding by all this uh, discursive and technological architecture. So there is a side and with this also serves to be uh, the power effects of producing uh, quality technologies, and speaking about quality. Uh, when, I, when I was referring to this uh, critical uh, position on quality, quality is an illusion, quality is separate, uh, quality is something we should go behind. We should not speak anymore about quality. So there are some scholars working. Uh, in, for example, in childcare or, na or, or nursing, uh, says stop speaking about quality because today the term quality has become a completely, totally complicit with a uh, certain neoliberal uh, ideology, managerial ideology. So we should not speak about quality improvement, quality measurement. Uh, let's speak about university, but not about quality of university. Let's speak about uh, child care, but not anymore about the quality of child care. Because uh, we see that by producing and implementing uh, indicators, rankings, uh, measurements, so we, uh, we just lose the real content. It's not by chance, it's just uh, all the attempts and uh, strategic effects of uh, uh, geopolitical uh, forms of, of power. From my point of view, well, this deserves to be considered, uh, even if, uh, as I told you, uh, I do not think that quality is merely an illusion or a threat or a mask. I think that uh, 
it's precisely by passing, uh, by taking in point that calculation of all human experience develops. So the relationship between the, the quality and calculation should not be uh, just framed in this way. Even if this not means that this kind of argument does not deserve to be considered. Questioning the very root of uh, the relationship between calculation and quality does not mean uh, do not consider uh, who is producing indicator, why uh, indicators are produced, uh, why and how uh, do standards have performative effects on policy, for example. And it's clear. Or oh, does not mean, for example, to ask, and some law scholars are beginning to, to question this. Uh, what does it mean uh, calculating uh, uh, the quality of regulation at the national level and comparing uh, regulatory regulation uh, at the national level? Say, it's law making, uh, and in general terms, regulation in France is better than regulation in another country. This means, according to, to some interpreter, uh, moving towards and uh, uh, finally the movement towards the global markets of the north. Juridical norms uh, become something which is market can be uh, put in the competition. Uh, uh, so calculation and marketization of law, of laws of regulatory issues uh, is at the core is, uh, uh, at the core of the contribution, critical contribution of some, of some legal scholars, for example. Global markets of law the effects, the performative effects of indicators, global indicators, supranational indicators on quality of regulation. I'm um, sorry, just on, the, on this idea of, of, about regulatory competition, maybe I'm not sure if the literature you're, refer you're referring to is the legal origins uh, literature by Schleifer and so forth. So, for instance, these people, they have compared, what Schleifer has done is they have compared the regulation of say, um, civil law countries, we can identify with France, with anglo saxon countries. Um, although, well, there is no time to, to go into this deeper, but in law, actually, so in actual legal scholarship, there is, this is coming under, under heavy attack. So the idea that you can make norms compete so that you can transplant something from a country to another, uh, you know, just like you don't take, you know, organs from somebody and put them onto somebody else without, well, it's very complicated. It's the same thing with, with, with law. So, with law, it's more problematic to extend this. There is a huge literature on this. Yeah, but you should ask why, for example, uh, with law, is it more complicated and more problematic? This is so just because uh, you cannot uh, transfer um, a certain uh, legal tradition from one country to another, or is because law itself uh, has something of the order of the uncalculable. Of something that cannot be calculated. What is law? Because I think everything, every norm has a function and I think one can measure how effective the, a, a certain norm is, is by seeing if, if it is really fulfilling that function, if it's doing what it is supposed to do. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why sometimes legal scholars and engage in legal transplants. Why is this cri uh, criticized? Because it can have unexpected consequences. And uh, again, a lot has to do with the legal culture in which that norm exists. So they are, they are exactly the two, um, so the, the, the ambivalence of the a critical position or the difference between two like, the difference between two different critical perspectives when quality and calculation or calculation of quality are state. One is 
let's say, a methodological uh, critical perspective. It says, uh, I do not think that it's useful to calculate this. Uh, I do not think that uh, we can calculate this. We have enough information to calculate this. Uh, I think that uh, calculating and producing these indicators can have um, unintended consequences. Uh, I can give you a good example. Suppose that in one. No, let, let, let me just finish. And on the other side, on the other hand, you can have, and including, for example, uh, referring to those low scholars, says, for me, low. It's not something that has a function, um, that is an objective. So, no, the relationship between no authority, language, cannot, is uh, avoid. Avoid considering no uh, something that can be triggered in terms of information. So, these uh, lines of criticism. Uh, quite different. One side you say, I don't have anything against producing information of quality or regulatory regime or laws. I'm just saying that uh, I do not have enough information. Uh, I do not think that it's useful. Uh, I, I think that this kind of measurement can have, uh, uh, and the use of, of this measurement. Uh, can have some unintended consequences. On the other side, uh, and I know, for example, some, some law scholars trying to uh, reflect on what does it mean uh, for, uh, for thinking law and, and droit in French. What does it mean to treat uh, laws uh, as something that can be compared, measured, and uh, something on which we can have unconditional information on their efficiency. What, what does it mean to treat law in the dimension of efficiency? So, two, two different lines of this. Of course, if, if, there, if you can identify two common goals, I mean, uh, well, one common goal is in two legal cultures, for instance, uh, minimizing the, the number of murders that exist in, in one certain society, you can see uh, society A is punishing murder with 30 years of imprisonment without parole, and one is, and the other one is punishing it with two years. And you can you can see uh, which one has more murders. I would presume that the one that punishes it well, with only two years has more murder. So. Uh, in those circumstances, I think it is viable to make a legal transplant and say, yeah, maybe we should increase the, the penalty for murder by maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. I'm, and in some cases, it is not so, so this easy. This is exactly, you, I mean, uh, you are an advocate uh, of, of the first perspective. You say, uh, for me, law and uh, lawmaking uh, can and should be treated uh, in terms of a physics. So in some cases, this is useful to, uh, to implement certain uh, quality measurement uh, technologies. In some other cases, uh, it might be not useful, it might be counterproductive or not. Uh, let's consider that there are some other people who think that the point is not when uh, it is uh, useful or uh, it is valid uh, to implement this kind of measuring, measuring practices. But they, they question, uh, they strongly reject the, the idea of considering law as something that can be uh, treated, can be uh, calculated on the basis of efficiency considerations. So this is uh, something, this diversity of perspective is something that we, you will always find when, when facing uh, quality and quality measurement. 
we always find some people who uh, approach the issue and say, uh, uh, I don't believe this is useful, I don't believe this is fair, uh, I don't know who is uh, ranking the universities, and maybe just people coming from uh, the same university who are on top of the ranks. Uh, uh, and uh, I want to say why it is, and uh, what is the link between the uh, professional communities, the epistemic communities who produce rankings and the results of rankings also. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you can have people uh, questioning from different perspectives uh, what does it mean when we calculate and and what does it mean when we calculate everything by calculating the quality of everything? And what, uh, how uh, does it, uh, or can it uh, help us, or just invite us, but can it, how can it invite us to think? Calling the end and interrogating the very meaning of the process. That is it's my uh, suggestion that we should consider uh, all these possibilities of thinking. Uh, we should avoid to uh, frame the issue uh, in, uh, in a certain space. It says, uh, I know enough about uh, calculation of quality, which is a very important phenomenon, which we continue to be. Really for practitioners, for law scholars, for economists, for sociologists, for anthropologists. Uh, my my lead suggestion is that uh, you should try to consider the, uh, the diversity of, of the nation. Uh, I don't think this issue can be interrogated, can be analyzed. And, uh, Considering also the diversity of questions that we can, that we can make of the approach. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.